Thank you, Yossi. Uh, well, I'm Gil Golan. I work for General Motors. Uh, I'm based in Tel Aviv, Israel, and I spend majority of the time uh, actually here in the States in uh, Michigan and in the Bay Area. Um, the name of the session is actually David and Goliath. So I'm not sure if I'm re representing the David of the world or the Goliath of the world, but we, the way to look at it, we are a small organization, a few hundred uh, top-notch engineers. In Tel Aviv, we are, in a way, we are the David and part of the large corporate, which is the Goliath. Um, I'll be talking today about autonomous vehicles in the new mobility era. Uh, we also touch the Israeli angle. Uh, Israel is becoming quickly a hub for autonomous technologies and uh, different transportation modalities. Uh, but let's start with a, with a short uh, video clip. Um, this clip was put together by GM about five, six years ago. One of the most likely scenarios for autonomous vehicle to be deployed is as part of a fleet uh, operator, not as an individual owner. And if this is the case, this is what has to be done in order to serve this purpose. So the vehicle, each single vehicle should be uh, electronic or electrical driven vehicle. We can tailor. Okay. In a way that we can tailor a solution for a specific uh, operator. If this is the case, what does it mean to us? The autonomous vehicle really uh, brings tremendous social impact. We listed a couple of uh, areas here. So on the safety side, there's the opportunity here to reduce dramatically casualties and death. On the environmental side, there's a way to actually reduce emissions significantly. On the space side, we uh, actually can free up space. Think about the new cities. We can get, uh, uh, road can get a uh, lower number of lanes. We can get, uh, we can uh, remove most of the gas station. We can remove uh, parking structure. Uh, road signs, traffic lights, the whole uh, city is going to change. On the cost side, less crashes and property damage means less cost, operational cost. Energy efficient systems and more uh, people uh, productivity, increased people productivity. This is what's uh, at stake. And rough estimation, um, rough estimation give us the opportunity to save up to 1.3 trillion dollar a year just in the U.S. alone. This is just saving on the social causes. It has nothing to do with the business opportunity that lies on top of that. So once there's a there's a automotive, there's the autonomous vehicle, there will be on top of that huge opportunity for new service offering. Um, so if this is the case, the end user, the people, 
or the public will demand that, and policymaker and regulation will actually react to that. And this is the way that we see it. This is the GM uh, autonomous evolution. Uh, on the left side, what you see is the boss. In fact, uh, we were, we've been working on that between 2005 to 2007. Uh, I was based here at the time. Uh, you can see the sensor are big and bulky. Uh, in the center, this is our cruise. Uh, if you uh, happen to be in San Francisco or a few other uh, cities in the US, you see this vehicle on the road. Uh, and tomorrow's really um, um, a shape that you see on the right side. In a way, the sensors are getting more smaller, more sophisticated, and getting under the skin of the vehicle. Uh, we are not sure how it's going to uh, shape. Uh, it's going to be uh, going to uh, uh, going to uh, shape up, but for sure, sensors and AI are, and AI are critical enabler for autonomous vehicle. Well, let's get started, just organize different uh, buzzwords here and people using um, too often the words autonomous vehicle, self-driving vehicle, uh, EV, electric vehicle, connected car. So let's get it straight. Autonomous vehicle, in order to be a player, to put on a road and to add autonomous vehicle, you need a couple of critical components. First, you have to have the platform itself. We argue that the, the, the platform should be electric-driven platform. On top of that, you need to remove the human driver and replace it with sets of set of sensors, algorithms, and actuators. On top of that, you need to create a pipe, uh, typically a solar uh, network, to be able to transfer large sets of data from the vehicle to the cloud and back in a very low latency. And then, obviously, the cloud ability as a platform to uh, manage and process data. Let's talk about each one of these. The first one is the EV platform. This is the GM platform that we use today. Very impressive vehicle. Uh, we believe that autonomous vehicle must be EV, electrically uh, powered, because if you don't have that, it will be very hard to unleash the potential of the autonomous vehicle. There will be cities and municipalities that ban other type of vehicles. They will force to have only electric vehicle in their city centers. Or penalize other type of uh, propulsion like ICE, internal combustion engines. The next piece is the human driver. In order to be successful, you're going to remove the human driver, okay, and put, again, sets of sensors, software or algorithms, and actuator. This is a classical description of the component that you need to replace the driver. On the left side, let's look at the lower uh, uh, chart here. On the left side, you see the yellow box, which is the sensor. So you, get, you have to have sets of sensors, like sets of cameras, LIDARs, radars, and different point-to-point uh, -point, uh, communication. Then. The sensor, in fact, um, acquire 3D data. The, the raw data goes, gets into the uh, processing unit, and then what we do, we fuse the data among the different uh, sensor uh, sources, and we do the first step, detection and classification. You want to know what objects are there and what they are. Next stage, what you're going to do, you're going to track and predict the uh, um, obstacle of interest, where they're going to be. In, 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 a, in a nutshell, you're going to create the speed vector or the, the, in order to track those uh, um, obstacles. Then you're going to take the, uh, you're going to reconstruct the environment based on the data that you get. You also get in the mapping data and the GPS, very accurate GPS, to do localization. Once you know where is the vehicle, what happened, what's around you, then you can make a decision and do the path planning. The decision goes to the actuator, which is a control here. In order to control a vehicle, you've got three elements, gas, brake, and steering. This is, in a nutshell, the whole replacement of the human driver. The next piece is actually the communication and the cloud. You have to have a very close loop of 
the embedded communication box that inside the vehicle, the cloud that in our the servers that is part of it in, in and the GM or in the uh, car maker uh, backyard, and then the the communication or the pipe that uh, enable the right bandwidth to transfer large amount of data between the vehicle and the, and the data center. Uh, we today use uh, 4G LTE. We already engage heavily on 4.5G and even 5G. We can skip this one. This is, the, in, in general speaking, it's opened the whole cybersecurity side as well. So let's talk about the Israeli angle here. Uh, to be able to work on an autonomous vehicle, you need a broad skill set. And a large subset of that can be found in Israel. These are examples of, on the field today, semi-autonomous and autonomous machines. Given that there is enough expertise and knowledge base that, based on that, we predict that Israel continue to play a critical role in the evolution of the autonomous vehicle. This is another uh, glimpse of uh, the Israeli startup arena. Today, out of, I believe, 5,500 startups in Israel, about 400 to 500 are focused on the new mobility era. Uh, this is just a subset of a segment, which is the AI. We just picked a couple of companies here. AI is critical for the future of any company, definitely for um, transportation or uh, mobility companies. By the way, we are in the DealMaker Summit. If you want to follow, if you want to see what's going on, follow the smart money and the serial entrepreneurs. If you follow the smart money and serial entrepreneurs, you see that many of them here in the Bay Area, in Tel Aviv and other locations, moving into this industry. So we can expect big, big returns in the future. Second one is the drone. Very interesting uh, uh, segment for us. The drone side uh, has a lot of similarities with autonomous vehicle. Uh, electronics and software component, as well as um, uh, uh, system level integration. And this is my last slide. Technically, what you see here, it's a landscape as of today in Israel. On the left side, you see the well-established multinational, non-traditional automotive company. On one side, on one side they do have uh, well-established centers in Israel, and they express their uh, wish or their interest to get into the new transportation arena. On the right side, this is the traditional uh, car players. Obviously, GM was the first one, as Yossi alluded to. Ten years ago, we opened the site there, uh, but the last year or two, we see more and more car makers and T1 suppliers coming. And what you see here is the list of companies that already established center or announced that they're going to open one or uh, in a very advanced stage of exploring. Thank you. Gil, before you leave the...